Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O our King and our God, Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whom to honor and love perfectly is righteousness, increase in us your holy grace, so that this sacred ceremony may remind us of the triumph ent entry of Jesus Christ into earthly Jerusalem, and most of all, to serve toward our own sanctification and eventual entry into your heavenly Jerusalem, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God, forever and ever. Amen. So the chief priests and Pharisees gathered the council and said, what are we to do? For this man performs many miracles. If we let him go on thus, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is expedient for you that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation should not perish. So from that day on they took counsel how to put him to death. For as they said, the Romans will come and destroy our, our holy place and our nation. Let us pray, O God, who did ordain that the multitude of Israel's believing people should honor with the tumultuous joy the Savior before his sacred passion, and did inspire the crowd to spread branches of olive trees and palms in the way, and to sing Hosanna in his praise, grant that we bury these palms the symbol of victory over evil, and these branches, the symbol of goodness, meekness, and justice, the gifts of the Holy Spirit within our hearts, may go forth to wage incessant war against the forces of evil, depravity, and falsehood, so that guided through life in the way of light, truth, and justice, we may enter into everlasting glory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, through our whole ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray. Increase, O God, the faith of those who put their trust in you and grant that strengthen in their love of you. They will never suffer disappointment. May these branches of palm, which we, your children, are about to receive and carry in commemoration of the solemn and sacred day of the life of Jesus Christ, inspire us to turn our eyes heavenward to your holy Jerusalem. 
Bless, O oh Lord, these branches of palm, as you did choose Noah to be the new father of the human race, Moses to be the leader of Israel's people, and Jesus Christ to be the Savior of us all. Grant, we beseech you, that contemplating the wonderful ways of your providence, we may fervently unite our wills with your holy will in the work of your own sanctification and our salvation. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, throughout all ages of ages.
Jerusalem. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village and opposite you, where you will find an ass tied and a cohort with her. I'll untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the colt and put their garments on them, and he sat there upon it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them. And the crowds went before them, and as they followed, they shouted.
written, They shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep of his flock will be he scattered. But after I am resurrected, I will go before you into Galilee. There you shall see me, says the Lord. Come, O Lord, our God. Lord, 
Lord, for us your wounds were suffered. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son has made the great holy and a place of hope for your people. May we who die in him also rise in him. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Cheryl, would you proclaim the word? Please be seated. The first reading is a reading from the book of Isaiah the prophet. The Lord God has given me well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like, like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Amen. The gradual, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered with the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in a human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Go through, go through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Clear it of stones. Lift up an essence over the people. The Lord has proclaimed the end of the earth. Say to the daughter Zion, see your salvation comes. It is your glory to the end, and it is your Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, For those of you who have a difficulty standing, since today we will be reading the Passion, which is a little bit longer than normal, please feel free to sit. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. 
and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, All men, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written on of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it in, giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then after sing, singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. <clears throat> then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. He said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? <clears throat> Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, 
who had come from the chief priest and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with him, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi! And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber, with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat there teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally two came forward and stated, this man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell me under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. <clears throat> then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said to him in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck him? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, you too were with Jesus the Galilean, but he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were with there, who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that time, he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken before the cock crows, You will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. 
They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said it is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor and he questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accompanied to release, a custom, I'm sorry, to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not seceding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. <clears throat> then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon, 
This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tested it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. And they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on the left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Ele, Ele, lama sabbatane, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait. Let us see if Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus cried out in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their graves after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was the evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewed in the rock. Then he rolled a large stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this impostor, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up giving orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him, and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, 
The guard is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a steel to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we joyously celebrate Palm Sunday. It is the only time in the life of Jesus that he allowed people to give him admiration and show their love to him. Coming from Bethany, where he had just raised Lazarus, his dear friend from the dead, he went up to Jerusalem for the last time. It was Passover, a holy day, where throngs of Jews from around the known, known world came to celebrate their liberation from the rule of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Many who came to Jerusalem heard of this special teacher and healer, the one who was looked to as the Messiah. God's chosen one, who would bring God's kingdom to them. For it was Passover, a most holy day where throngs of the Jews from all the known world would come this year to celebrate their liberation, finally, from the rule of the emperor and the Romans. So in devotion on this day, they laid palm branches and even removed their outer garments in an act of submission. But something was not right. The Messiah did not come with legions of supporters who would win their liberation through acts of violence. The Messiah was not even seated on a horse, a symbol of power, but rather on a donkey, an animal, a beast of burden. I am sure that many who were there that day just shook their heads in disgust and frustration. Everything that this Jesus did in his three-year ministry pointed to him as a liberator. But Jesus on that first Palm Sunday was a different kind of liberator. Palm Sunday for Christians around the world begins Holy Week. 
the week that took place in Jerusalem, known as the City of Peace, circa 30 A.D. It began with shouts of celebration, which then turned into pleas, where the crowds began to shout, Hosanna, or to save us, Lord. From these sounds of joy and expectation, these sounds would soon be replaced with screams of crucify him, mixed with crying and with weeping. And then there was silence. Jesus would be nailed to the cross and die. It is finished. Were the words that a few of the remaining disciples who had gathered at the cross heard from this great pulpit, from this great liberator, where the hopes and the aspirations of God's chosen people were on a cross of wood. They knew that God was with them from the beginning. And now it seemed that everything was over. This teacher and healer, taken down from the cross, was placed in the tomb, and then there was silence. Where were all those who were recipients of his healings? Where were his chosen apostles? Who walked with this Jesus? Who talked with this Jesus? And were taught by this Jesus of the kingdom of God? Out of fear, most abandoned the Lord. Only a few remained, I guess in the minds of most, this Jesus was not the one. Things have not changed for the throngs who gathered for Passover in Jerusalem that year. As a matter of fact, things got worse. The hopes and expectations would die on the cross. But yet, there were still those who believed in this man Many believed in him. And you know, the poems that you receive and accept today speak of your hopes, your faith, and your trust in the one whom God sent into this world. Unlike the people in the days of Jesus, they do not know as we know what was to happen one week later on that first Easter morning. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, the world in which we live today seeks a liberator for the sins of man. It seeks a liberator from all the evil and the hatred in this world. Sadly, our world has not learned from its past mistakes. And so many people are still blind and deaf to the message of this great liberator who simply says, follow me. I pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this holy week may be a week for you a week of grace, as well as a week of sorrow, a week of repentance, as well as a week of love. I pray that we all may walk closer to the Lord, that we all stay vigilant and awake and not abandon Him as so many did that first Palm Sunday 
and the days that were to follow. There were many sounds that were heard that first week. From the joyous shouts to the crying out to the words of crucify to the sounds of the whipping the hands and feet being nailed to the cross the blaspheming the condemnation and finally the sounds that was spoke by our Lord <coughs> of love and forgiveness. I pray that this Holy Week we may all hear the voice of the Lord speak within us, within our hearts and minds, as his disciples. May we all hear his voice speak within our souls and give to each of us a greater commitment to serve the one who was, who is, and shall ever be known as the Prince of Peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. but there was none for comforters and I found none rather they put gall in my food and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept our sacrifice from your hands for the great and glory of his name, for our good and the benefit of the whole church. Amen. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, may the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus, make us pleasing to you. Alone we can do nothing, but may this perfect sacrifice be for us and unite us in mercy and love. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We Give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The sufferings and death of your Son brought life to the whole world, moving our hearts to praise your glory. The power of the cross reveals your judgment on this world and the kingship of Christ crucified. Therefore we join this day with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son and the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son and the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. May we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying the hungry and the homeless and the unemployed, for all those who strive for peace in our world. May we remember in our prayers all abuse and neglected children, all abuse and neglected animals, and all victims of violence both here and abroad. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders and healthcare workers. May we give God our thanks for all those who serve in our armed forces. And on this Palm Sunday, let us again pray for peace. As well as for one another. And Father, all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, 
to accept and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily his entire being he again lives among his people. At that moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his so glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar, into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for their, your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and then following the mind in example, we say with confidence,
from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul's also, Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this mingling and the consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. And grant that no sin remain in us. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. Partaking. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your living servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be safe from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word that I shall be healed. Receive the Lord. Oh. 
unless I drink it, your will be done. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, O loving Father, you have satisfied our hunger with this sacred banquet. The death of your Son gives us hope and strengthens our faith. May his resurrection give us perseverance and lead us to salvation. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lo, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which I, the one worthy, have offered up into the side of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may it be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light, the real light which gives light to every man who is coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 